Hi, it's Emily, Kid Lit Book Love. I'm here to talk to you about something I'm super duper excited about. This just came in the mail yesterday from the Easton Press, and it's Beauty and the Beast, um, and a, re a reproduction of the original telling of the fairy tale story. And if you're not familiar with the Easton Press, they make these beautiful leather bound sort of antiquarian reproduction books. Here's um, the Emerald City of Oz. They always have gold pages. They're very heavy. And um, you go to their website, eastonpress.com. They do have some children's books, stories. Right now they have a set that I want so bad. It's the Classics of Enchantment four book set, a box set of beautiful children's stories. And there's The Princess and the Goblin, which I will do a review about, which I just read the other day, um, a different copy. And they have The Water Babies, Peter Pan, and the Enchanted Castle. Uh, I want that so bad, but it's like $200, but it's on my wish list soon. This is a special and limited edition. It had 1,875 copies, and it's in this beautiful sleeve, which is very heavy for display. It's sort of satiny. Um, here's the book. It's big. It's about the size of like a, bigger than the size of a piece of printer paper. It has the gold embossed um, edges. It has a satin bookmarker ribbon. Oh, it smells like a brand new leather book. Um, I'm not a big fan of leather, but I mean, in my books, I just like it. Um, beautiful. And it comes with a certificate inside. It says, Beauty and the Beast, an old tale new told with all the original color and black and white illustrations from the 1875 London edition by Eleanor Vere Boyle. The edition is strictly limited to a quantity of 1875, of which this is number 300. And seven. Now, the original Beauty and the Beast was published in the 1700s by a Frenchman, actually in 1756, and his name, and it's hard to pronounce, is Jean-Marie Le Prince de Beaumont, and the original um, fairy tale story didn't really, as I recall, didn't have illustrations. In the 1800s, this, this beautiful woman decided to do these beautiful paintings and drawings, and they released a new edition, and this is a reproduction of that. And oh, I am so in love with this book. It has this beautiful sort of wallpaper lining in here where it's very smooth and satiny. Some introduction pages with more information. And it even has my special number of 307. So I have the 307th book of 1800. So they probably still have plenty of copies if you jump in there and want to grab one. It, here's the very first page. Um, you can see what Belle, um, and I'm going to talk about that. Her name was actually Beauty, not Belle in the book. One cold March day, the little maid ran down to the outer court with her new scarlet cloak to wrap her friend, the old watchdog, in. So it has, you know, these little, that was just the entry, and then it has a list of illustration plates, and then we have the beginning of the story here. And I like how they formatted it sort of in these sort of calligraphic, boxes and it does have beautiful the original illustrations from the 1800s that this woman did in that retelling and reprinting of the story um it has you know black and white a lot of illustrations throughout beautiful beautiful i can't tell you how much i love it the back also has the gold pages and here's the sort of happily ever after. So the thing with Beauty and the Beast, whatever you think you know about Beauty and the Beast from the Disney movie is really not the case. So wipe that out if you're not familiar with the original story. And if you've read Grimm's Fairy Tales, which was after this original, way after this original printing, um, they're very dark, and this does have a bit of darkness, very much a sense of the gothic, the grotesque, and, you know, it talks about death and dying, this monstrosity and kind of ogreous kind of, and, you know, doppelganger kind of themes in here. But um, it's very different. So beauty was... Well, in the movie, Disney, of course, is what you probably think of Beauty and the Beast or the show. Um, Belle, um, which is really Beauty, I'm going to call her Beauty, it's the real name. She has a father who's like a merchant, and in the movie you see her you know, happy, running around with books, and her father has this store. Well, in the book, this is not the case. So there are 
she has like several sisters and several brothers and she is the beautiful one and all the others are all the other sisters are ugly but the father was more like a traveling um business like i don't want to say a pirate more like he was a merchant but he would do these expeditions where he would go around to collect money and gold and treasures and sell it or and get his own payment for it and he was going on this one expedition and asked all of his daughters what would you like me to bring you and Belle says, I just want a single white rose. And the sisters say they want gems and gold and all these fancy things. But, of course, not beauty because she's very simple and kind and not materialistic. So he fails on his expedition. The ship sinks. And he comes back, though, alive and feels like a failure because he couldn't bring a very simple white rose to his favorite. He even says, my, met, my best loved child. So he starts sort of perusing the landscape looking for... A white rose which are very hard to find and he comes across this sort of castle that has a wall that has this beautiful garden overhanging and he sneaks in to go to steal a rose and gets caught by this big monster that appears and um, the monster says basically says that um, you know the penalty for stealing is death and dismemberment but if you bring me the beauty that this rose was intended for I'll forgive you this debt and so you know, from there it kind of goes, but it's very different than the movie. There's no Gaston. There's no forced marriage thing, really, like you'd see <laughs> see in the Disney movie. Um, same, there's a similar, you would recognize some of the story. And the language in here is would be difficult for a younger child, uh, unless you're going to read it to them, because there's a lot of sort of... Um, like Shakespearean type terminologies and medieval, you know, hence and whence and things you'd see in the Fairy Queen that are a little bit more complicated, you know, some younger children wouldn't be able to read. I would definitely say this is for adults, high school, fine book lovers, um, unless you want to read them the original if it's a younger child. But it does have a little bit of darkness in it. Um, it's not the easiest words, you know. Now are we in the most evil plight, said they, that our sister, younger than we, should go, thus apparelled in silken stuffs, and live in a king's palace. And then they took secret counsel, one with the other, for they said, So we may but prevail to keep her here yet another seven nights with this grotesquely beast, and on and on. So, you know, not the easiest language, takes a little bit of interpretation, but I love this set. Um, I love the Eastern Press because they do payment plans and you don't have to do like a credit application. You go to purchase something, you can do pay in three payments and all you do have to give them is your credit card. You pay for the first payment and shipping and then each month they take out this, the remaining payments. This one was about $190 really. And not definitely a collectibles investment, but I think it was two payments of 90, two payments of 95, which included the shipping. So, but beautiful book. I can't recommend it enough. Thanks for watching and if you have any Eastern Press editions you love, please share in the comments below.